everybody. Welcome to another day with Organizing Adventures with Jen. Mm -hmm. And here is our wonderful organizer, Jen Molinari. And I'm Carolyn Topol. And I will be your host as Jen shares her professional skills in an actual kitchen. Now, this may look a little set up, but really, truly, without question, this is my kitchen. This is the kitchen I use in my home. This is my house. And we just recently moved here. So using Jen as my professional advisor, she set up this kitchen for me. Now, she didn't do it when I wasn't here. Um, as is respectful, she showed, talked to me about this. Yeah, of course. She had me with her and said, I think this would work best here. And we worked things out. And some of what we worked out was based on the spacing of the cabinets, what I had and used most, and possibly in many ways, most importantly at times, my height and the height <laughs> challenges of some of these cabinets. So using that as the beginning template, Jen helped set up this kitchen about, what, three months ago? Something like that, yes. So here we go. So we also have some wonderful questions from some of you, and we will address those. But for starting, Jen, what was the first thing you did when we came in, you know, dishes, boxes, silverware, cooking utensils and everything and just plunk them in the floor? Well, I looked at what the cabinets looked like inside, the spacing that it had. And then I thought about the size of whatever you needed and where you use it in the kitchen. Okay, where you use it in the kitchen, got it. Very important. Okay, that I, I see that now because I was just thinking, yeah, because I remember one of the things you showed me, mm -hmm. and we planned this out really nicely, was here was where we put mugs. Mm -hmm. And the ones we use the most are on the bottom shelf. So I can reach them. Yes. And right beneath the mugs is my coffee maker. Which makes the most sense. I have that set up at my house as well. Um, in my kitchen, it's perfect. Uh, because, yeah, everyone has a lot more mugs Mugs are fun to collect. Right. But they really, the ones that you like to use the most, have them at your eye level, I guess. And definitely have it near where you're going to use well, it Well, and most. you can see not only eye level, but arm level. Yes. Because <laughs> like here, I, yeah, I'm already getting near my tippy toes, pit, reaching up on these. And yes, while I can reach them and they're usable, it is a challenge. And anything in the back of the shelf, um, as you advise me and we purchase together, uh, as many of you might know, know or need, one of the best utensils in a kitchen is a stepladder. The lightweight ones are great. Um, hardware stores, seriously. Um, again, I have one, she got one, it's great. And they all label them how sturdy they are and the weight that they carry so that you can get one that you're comfortable with so that when I do need to reach up a little bit higher, I have a safe way to do that. Okay, so we came in and you talked about where things would be used. Yes, okay. so when we brought the mugs over, that's what we talked about. When we brought all your pots and pans right. and cookware over, um, we talked about the fact that we want it to be near the oven, but not stored in it. I know small, a smaller kitchen, you store it in it sometimes. So, for example, you have your pans and your pots that you would use more frequently in here. And they are stacked. They do have dividers um, in order to not scratch each other. And if you want to lift one and show the divider, we I selected. I mean, you could do anything you want Well, this was one to. that, my, that um, she selected. But uh, it's great. You just, it's a good cushion base to have between them. Otherwise, you end up scratching up the bottoms of them. Um, but this is easy. You reach down, you grab your pan. Okay, put that there while I'm about to set it up on the stove. Cool. And these huge ones are in front because those are the ones that she told me she uses the most often. Yes, I do a lot of sauteing. So then, however, she 
Also, she doesn't bake very often, mind the kitty food. Um, <laughs> but she does have her Pyrex dishes right here, nice and reachable. Um, the strainer is also nice and reachable because of the handle. However, all the way back there is the pot that she uses once or twice a year to make soup. Really, really good soup. By the way, <laughs> I got to try it. <laughs> um, so keeping it further back, still reachable. Excellent. Uh, you know what? Somebody asked a question about that, Jen. Let's address that. Somebody asked a question about what to, con to do with containers that are really, really big and less often used items, but something you still want to get at. So what's the general principle that you would go by? And I know what you talked yeah. to me about my soup pot, which was also awkwardly shaped because it's a 12 quart pot. So basically you want to store things kind of in a, almost like a front to back thing. Anything you use most often you want in front. Anything you use even less, you just throw in the back. And if you have to reach it for any given time, you already know how the stuff in front is set up because you take it out all the time. So you just kind of scooch, grab the thing that you need. Um, mm -hmm. I know someone has a whole set of metal strainers and they actually, since they only use it sometimes, they don't really do too much with straining stuff. It's behind their Pyrex dishes. Like okay. yours. Right, right. So it's a similar concept. But I use my Pyrex dishes regularly, like for example, when I just cook chicken. Exactly. Glass dishes, those dishes are great for cooking chicken for sure. Another place that I thought of with your help. Yes. For, for using stuff that I use a lot, utilizing, I'm calling it stuff, but kitchen utensils, utility wear. Um, Kitchenware. Kitchenware. Down here, I have my favorite mini cutting board because I cut vegetables almost on a daily basis. And one of the things for those of you who haven't purchased something like this yet, I have a couple of different styles. This is a small one. I also have a slightly bigger one. Not only are these really useful and really easy and lightweight, but on top of that, they're dishwasher safe. And I mean bottom shelf. You don't have to find a top shelf that could fit them and no glasses will go there. These are bottom shelf dishwasher safe. So, and they're not expensive. There's a few brands that do that now, yes. which is nice. Dishwasher safe is a big deal. So lots and lots of uh, cookware brands have been starting to make things as dishwasher safe as humanly possible. And then I have a couple of little cooking trays down there and the cookie sheets for the once in a blue moon, I would actually make a cookie. Um, or something that might need a cookie sheet, which for me is the once in a blue moon, which is why they're further back. But see, by using that cabinet and standing them up, you're taking up a lot less space than if you laid them flat in a different cabinet. That takes up all sorts of room and then you end up stacking a lot. This gives you a lot more space because it takes up less surface area on the ground. And it reminds me of a bookshelf where you can pull out the thing in the furthest back it doesn't matter because it's, exactly. all, it's all reachable. If I stacked it, let's say, under the pans in this it cabinet. It gets so complicated and messy. And I, wouldn't, I probably wouldn't use them. Oh, well, that's no fun. Because <laughs> they would be awkward to keep pulling out and hauling out all the time. Exactly. Oh, and one thing we did put in there because we couldn't, it was really complicated, is we actually even figured out how to get a rolling pin that was long in a cabinet. So we got that rolling pin in just in the nick of time, all the way in the back. Well, it gives some good uh, bolstering, you know, on it, the bottom there for, it's like a bookend. There we go, my book, there's my books and my bookend once again. <laughs> and we move to library themes once more. Okay. <laughs> okay, so now I know some, but some other people ask, so what else did you do to set up the kitchen? We got the pans and the pots and the cooking yes. uh, vessels yes. near the oven. Dishes, basically, you use them anywhere, everywhere. It doesn't really matter, ultimately, once you figure out the things that have more of a location. Okay. So your dishes that you use most frequently are the easiest to get to cabinets. Okay. Literally. And like you have two sets. These are the ones you use most often. And again, it's a reachable situation. Right. Um, 
along with some stuff up, up here that you use even less often, but that you really like and want to keep um, accessible. And one of the things, I don't know if anybody notices, I chose not to use shelf liners. That was a personal choice because I have felt when I see shelf liners that they actually, and maybe you're, you correct me if I'm wrong, if you put something away that might have a tiny bit of moisture left from the dishwasher I'm talking they about. They get sticky. They get sticky, they get stained, and they start to deteriorate. Um, and it, the cabin is meant to hold the dishes. It's, it, that's the, its whole, sole purpose. If you're concerned about like cleanliness, if you're moving into somewhere that was very, very old and has like these maybe like stained shelves that makes you uncomfortable, there are things that aren't like that sticky okay. shelf liner that you can use. Um, when I lived in an apartment, I had, there's this like rubby grip kind of thing. Okay. I don't know how to explain it otherwise. It's almost like if you use, it's like the things that you put under a uh, area rug. Oh, so almost so, like a rug pad. Almost like a rug pad, uh, except dish safe. Okay, so we have the dishes and there. I, and I lined shelves with that because moisture didn't really do much with it. It just basically, it was like if you needed it to stay in place. Okay. So it works there. really well if that's something that you would prefer. But honestly, keeping the shelves empty um, of liners, totally fine. As long as it's something you're comfortable with as well. Right. Um, you have actual access now to your china, which is exciting. And these are the Tupperwares that you said you use the most often. The other ones are kind of further back, again, with the whole further back situation. Right, my Tupperwares, my Rubbermaids, those are the ones I use we weekly, daily, frequently. Exactly. Okay. Uh, and part of that is because my husband does take, when he goes into his office, he takes his lunch. So the little ones are what we use a lot. So that's why you saw a big stack of those, which are very helpful. And then you have the utensils in a great spot. We put them right under the everyday dishes. So it's great and all of the matching little things that go with it. But then also the stuff that you use when cooking is in this drawer and the drawer to the other side of your oven because when you use it, you're using the oven. <laughs> there you go, yeah. The, there's a, you know, the big knife, the big knife here, so you can chop, everything like Even that. Even the cooking thermometer right near the, th the stove. Of course, because you need the thermometer with the oven and the stove. So <coughs> these are here with a purpose because you use them for cooking, you want them there. And then I have those right on the counter because they're used like continually. Yeah. Um, exactly. That was a personal choice I made not to have them stored in a drawer because it was just easy to pop them out like you would pop a straw out of a store dispenser. Exactly. It's also a lot easier than trying to use a drawer organizer that could somehow fit in any drawer and divide things that are that big. Otherwise, you just get a jumble. Okay. And it's a mess. So having those jars is actually something really good um, for things that you use frequently. Now... On the counter, I made some choices about where to put things, um, but you particularly work with me on that side of the counter. This was more my side with things that are more personal. Yes. So these were things that you said that you use sometimes, but not all the time. But they're things that also would need space when you pull them out. So in the case of whoop, mixer, nope. Yeah. Food processor. Food processor. Thank you. There we go. Mixer's right next to it. Mixer's next to it. The hand mixer. Yes. In the case of the food processor, now you can pull it forward. You have all of this counter space here available and you have multiple outlets. <laughs> At least my, in this particular case, they had a lot of outlets, but they have one in particular that I was focused on that was over there where nothing else was. So it's perfect. Yes. And then because it's not used all the time, this corner that you can't really reach much anyways, 
is a great place to keep it. Okay, so now we moved on to glasses. Yes. That was, again, kind of a reaching situation. So, the most frequently used up to least frequently used. And it's the same over here with wine glasses, which we kept separate because stemware is always a little bit more fragile than your average water glass. So, and gets a lot less traffic, at least in this house. Yes, <laughs> tends to get a lot less traffic. So water glasses, always the easiest to reach. Now, regardless of your beverage of choice, I think water glasses are always most important to reach because you should always have easy hydration. Any easy access to hydration is great. And I will say that although these are not particularly close to the fridge, it's not like it's a five mile walk to the refrigerator to get a glass of water. Um, and it just seemed to be the perfect cabinet as opposed to utilizing um, a cabinet that actually has plates and is much longer across. Cause because that cabinet you, really has the space that goes straight through. Exactly, since this one can go straight through and even further over to this side, you wanna keep your dishes together. See, she can even add more dishes that match this if she wants, or don't match, there whatever works. But it made more sense to keep these like this so that they were all together. Yes, I agree. Than to have like some here and some there, just so that you could have your glasses over here. Right, I, and I agree, I, I have found comfort with that. Um, we also found that there was a couple of little drawers and I thought, what am I gonna put in them? And then you helped out with that too. Well, you do like to keep your towel, your kitchen towels folded in drawers in the kitchen because it can be annoying to get them out of a towel, you know, linen closet or something all the time. And then my linen closet's upstairs. In all honesty, I really did not want the linens upstairs because then I'm running up and down the stairs to get kitchen towels. Exactly, and this drawer fit them perfectly when you fold them nice and little. Mm -hmm. And this one is where we thought would be great for measuring spoons. They're small. It's okay that you're far away from over there where you're gonna measure stuff. Um, what's great about it though is this was just the right size to fit your measuring spoons, your measuring cups, well, without and then, overflow. And then truly in my last home, those things got lost in a drawer with other things and I was constantly looking for the right size. Now it's easy to see them all because that's all that's in there. Yep. Um, that was it. So that worked out um, very well. It's nice that you have those extra drawers here. Yes. <laughs> um, and I will say, somebody was asking about storing spices and the best way to do that. So I'm gonna let you, Jen, show what we found in this place. Cause I used to have a spice rack, but I really don't have a wall. The particular home I purchased is an open plan. And in this case, the open plan does not have wall space in the kitchen, other than the backsplash, which of course you're not gonna put a spice rack against on the, the backsplash, it wouldn't work. Exactly. This spins. And there you have all your spices. Now, and since I do do a lot of actual savory cooking, I do use a lot of seasoning. Yes. But also, I just want to point out that this is also organized in a front to back kind of situation in a what often restaurants or something will say FIFO, first in, first out. So you have your open jar. Then you have your next closed jar of the same thing. When you use it often, you want to do that, but you want to make sure to keep them in the order that you got them and use the first one you got before the one that you got like, you know, five seconds ago. <laughs> <laughs> use the one you got two weeks ago, not the one that you got a week ago. Um, and that way you're also prepared for the things that you tend to use the most. Uh, down here, some stuff has been moved into ulterior packaging, or which was alternative, a question, rather. Alter, uh, yeah, and I know s somebody had asked about that, where they asked you, gee, if you had something you buy in bulk, what should you store it in? Um, 
some people would store something in, like, and I've done this in the past, in some sort of Rubbermaid or Tupperware style container. But for example, for kosher salt, it came in a big box with a really small opening. And all it did was spill out the sides when I just tried to measure a little bit. So what we did, we discovered that the glories of sealable bags. These are awesome. The resealable bags are great um, because you can uh, make it airtight. And that way you keep things fresh. They stay good. Moisture free. Yeah, moisture free. And the airtight part is great. You never want to have as much bubble. Like a lot of people will seal it and you'll have like roof. So the one thing I will say, because I do have a lot of seasonings, mm -hmm. as you all saw when we just spun that massive uh, Lazy Susan cabinet around. Which is awesome. I alphabetize the ones on top. So if they're in those jars that like every jar looks the same and half of them are green and half of them are like red, and you, it would be impossible. So what I do is I alphabetize them. So if you actually ever open that, you'd see like the all spices first and like the paprika and the parsley are in the middle and a few of the other spices like thyme and sage are near the end. Unless of course you open the door the other way and then it starts with tea. Well, the best <laughs> thing is because if I open the other way, it's when I know I only need the thyme. Oh, well, there you go. So I'm lucky I got a two way street going here. It's great. Um, and it's really good that you had this because a lot of times there isn't some sort of cabinet like this, which is difficult then to figure out, okay, well, I don't have a wall and I don't have as much counter space for a spinner. Spinners are cool, I will say, um, but they do take up a lot of counter space. So I will actually point out that while, if yes. she didn't have that, while it would be slightly less convenient, there all are smaller shelf things that you can get that fit like in this small area. And they're perfect for spices. Um, I know uh, friends, I've helped organize their spice system because it was not good. And <laughs> I helped them figure out a great way to condense it, make it a lot easier to figure out. And they didn't have um, they needed like to use a little piece of wall as opposed to a cabinet or a spinner that there's not necessarily room for. And by the way, just adding, and this was something I did personally, um, without consulting my professional consultant, uh, this home is a more recently built home. It's less than 10 years old. And I'm not sure how many of you realize, but when you pass decade at least, they don't put medicine cabinets in bathrooms unless it's specifically requested. And of course, we didn't request it, so it wasn't there. So what we did was there is a cabinet that we've used um, to keep things like, you know, the Tylenol, the, the, the medicines that we use on an ongoing basis, the vitamins and stuff. So we did use cabinet space in the kitchen for that since we had it to use. Some people will use their linen closet. We were lucky. We had cabinet space here. Um, now, I will ask you another question. Mm -hmm. When I looked over there and I saw those cabinets, I was like, OK, I can get on a stepladder and reach those. But then there's some cabinets that are over the refrigerator. And even on the stepladder, I could not reach them. I would have to repel with you know, <laughs> belaying cords and stuff to get up there. So Yes, no rock climbing on your fridge. No rock climbing on the fridge. So what do we say is best for cabinets like that that are really out of reach? My husband can get to them, but I can't. Okay, well, in that case, he can use them for anything he uses. You told me he backpacks. Yes, he does. So that's a great place for all those water bottles that get in the way or something like that, or the oh, uh, mess okay. kits, all of the things that you don't want mixed in with your dishes that he would take on his trips or something. Very good. Oh, that's a good one. I like that. Yeah. I like that. Now, I'm going to ask you a really important question that one of our viewers did ask, and that was about what do you do with things that are not child safe when you have children or visiting children, for example? Like, for example, I have a great carving set over there, a real nice set there. 
That is definitely not safe. It is <laughs> not locked. So your options are you can move it into another room. You can move it into a cabinet that has a really tall shelf. Okay. Uh, like in your pantry or something, if there's a way to hide it there. Oh, that's that's a good idea. I never thought about that. Okay, so the pantry, because I have upper shelves in my pantry I rarely use because I can't reach those. Yeah, and I mean, what's a kid want to do in the pantry? There's only, like, non-cooked things. It's, and if you have If the it, cookies are there, I take them out so they don't get tempted. Exactly. <laughs> if the cookies are there, they're already out for them. Right, that's true, too. So there you go. So the knives, you also can just, in this particular case, put them right on top of the fridge. So I can still get to them. Exactly. You'd want... Um, and you said that your husband can reach up there. So there you go. You could have them here facing so that one of you could reach them and get it down. And that way, a kid can't reach them. But you know what? If I'm on my little step ladder, that location I can reach. It's the cabin. It's all the way in the back. I couldn't. Okay, valid. <laughs> so there we go. That No, that would be great. Um, what else do you recommend leaving out in general... Use, utilizing your space you do have, your counter space. What are the best things? Like if you would name three things you should always have on your counter before we close. Okay, well I personally think that a toaster is important. Okay. Whether you prefer a toaster oven or like this, just like the pop-up toaster, I think toasters are super important. Okay. Um, things you said that we didn't mention, right? Or even just I repeating. Because I do think the coffee maker, coffee is essential in my world um, and in a lot of people's world. And if it's not essential in your world, there's also electric tea kettles that are amazing um, that are great for boiling water, making instant soup, anything like that. Um, and then I have kitchen utensil containers and I have a knife block as well because those are super, super necessary for people who just who cook. Um, so that's things that I think would be great on a counter. If you like using those funky things like the um, panini presses or um, like an air fryer, there's always ways to make that work. Um, in that case, I would have said, oh, you have an air fryer. Let's put that here and then put the toaster here okay. so that it has a little bit more room to function as opposed to the toaster which is very small and compact and doesn't need as much room. Now, Jen, you can be reached at Organizing Adventures with Jen, and that's Jen with two N's, dot com. Mm -hmm. And people can reach you. They can get advice from you. They can have you come and do an estimate in their home. Yep, free and, estimates. Uh, free estimates, even better. Yep. And get your help for either packing, unpacking, doing whatever and we will see you next month for another subject it'll be exciting so thank you uh this is jen molinari our wonderful organizer and i'm carolyn topol saying bye-bye for now we'll see you next month <laughs> <laughs>